thanks for staying with us. Welcome to The World Today on Channels Television. My name is Jocker Rogers. Well, today's program will be starting off here in Africa and to be specific in South Sudan, where the president, Salva Kiir, has sacked the head of the army. Now, a decree read out on state television announced that General James Hoff Mai would be removed with immediate effect and no reason was given for this. The country has been in turmoil since December last week, where rebels seized the oil hub of Bentiu. Meanwhile, the UN has accused the government of providing erroneous information regarding a massacre of hundreds of civilians in the town. The UN mission in South Sudan said after rebel forces captured Bentiu on April 15th and 16th, they targeted hundreds of people who had taken refuge inside a mosque, a church and a hospital and killed them because of their ethnicity. UN peacekeeping chief Havei Latsas briefed the Security Council on Wednesday, April the 23rd on the recent attacks on civilians in South Sudan and emphasized that the circle of violence in the country must stop immediately. The first from my part is that we are not and cannot be in a business as usual format. I think this cycle of violence that started on the 15th of December last year has to stop. It must stop immediately. Yet, we see that neither party is ready to in any way seize the hostilities, the agreement on that which was signed exactly to this day, three months ago, has never been implemented. They do not give indication that they sincerely want to participate in the peace talk. Last week, rebels slaughtered hundreds of civilians when they seized the South Sudan oil hub of Bentiu, hunting down men, women and children who had sought refuge in a mosque, church and hospital. The UN has a base in the town. Rebel troops overrun Bentiu, the capital of the oil-producing unity state. More than one million people have fled their homes since fighting erupted in the world's youngest country last December between troops backing President Silva Kiir and soldiers loyal to his sacked Vice President Rick Masha. The fighting has exacerbated ethnic tensions between Kiir's Dinka people and Masher's Nur. Rebels denied carrying out the attack, which has drawn international outrage. Joy Ogu, Nigeria's UN ambassador and the current council president, echoed Latsa's sentiment. Full of deterrence. She said that most council members in the meeting had suggested using the principle of deterrence to send a message unequivocally to the parties responsible for this impunity that must not happen again. The responsibility of Every nation state is to protect its citizens and maintain order within its territory. And we stress the inviolability of UN uh, uh, institutions resident in, in the member state countries that they can violate the sanctity of the UN institution and kill people inside those institutions, uh, it's, it's intolerable. It should, it should not happen. The UN mission in South Sudan, known as UNMIS, has approximately 8,500 military peacekeepers and police deployed in a country the size of France with a population of just 11 million. I'm now being joined on the world today by the, the voice of America's managing editor for South Sudan, uh, John Tanza, to discuss more on uh, this issue. John, uh, the president, uh, Salva Kiir, has sacked his army chief without giving any reason. What do you think could be responsible for this decision? Well, of late, the South Sudan army has been defeated. They've been defeated in several fronts, in Bentiu, in Mayom, and other small villages, it looks like uh, the military is having, it's going through its own problems. And there's also been reports of mass defection within the military. So the sacking of the chief of staff could be something related to the performance of the military of late. 
President uh, Kerr has also removed an extremely important official who shares the uh, rebel leader Riek Machar's uh, ethnicity and replaced him uh, with a dinka from his own greater Bar El Ghazal region. What messages is, is, is he sending to the uh, newer tribe? Could it worsen to uh, an ethnic crisis, do you think? That, uh, the, the removal of uh, Major General James Oth who is a uh, Nuer and who comes from uh, uh, Riek Machar's uh, et ethnic Nuer group, is a, a, a very clear message that the president is sending out there. He's trying to get rid of people who he thinks are associated closely with uh, rebel leader Riek Machar. But the message he's sending out there is not very good because some people might easily uh, mistake it for, you know, the war uh, turning into a tribal guerrilla warfare between the Nuer and the Denka because the people that he brought very close, like the person replacing uh, General James Oth, is the former governor of uh, northern Bahar al Ghazal, and that is uh, Paul Malong Awan, who has been known for being very, very brutal during the first uh, civil war between South Sudan and then North Sudan. So putting Paul Malong in charge of the army sends a different message. What happened to the January ceasefire deal, John? Uh, the UN has accused all sides of failing to end the cycle of violence. Why is this so? Well, the two parties have not been negotiating in good faith. That has to be said from the onset because each of them want to cling to their own you know, claims and uh, claims of legitimacy. The government in Juba keeps saying we are a, an elected government. We cannot uh, give, our, give in to the positions of the rebels. The rebels are saying the government in Juba has failed to protect its civilians, and so its legitimacy is uh, in stakes. So what is happening is Two sides are holding to their extreme positions. And these positions are further backed by extremists within you know, the rebel side and within the government side. And so there is no, if you like, goodwill from the two sides to speak and sit down and negotiate. Right. Uh, we know that Ben Chiu has been a hotbed of violence, uh, really, a couple of days ago, recently today, too. Uh, what do you make of the South Sudan's government's accusation that the UN actually barred residents seeking protection from entering its base in Ben Chiu? Well, what is happening is this is a time of war, and uh, it's each side sends out messages of propaganda to tint the image of the either side. There is no independent confirmation of that report from other organizations in Bentu. Yes, the rebels had, when they captured Bentu, they tried to you know, block the entrance of the UN camp because they thought some of the fighters from South Sudan government might drift into the camp and pretend to be civilians. And Bentu was very polarized. There were several elements within Bentu. There were uh, allegations of uh, rebels from Sudan who were fighting alongside with Juba in Bentu. There were also allegations of uh, rebels of the Sudan Revolutionary Front, which is uh, a, an umbrella group of rebels in Khartoum who are fighting the government in, 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 in Sudan. They were also said to be in Bentu. So the rebels spokesperson said they, they went to block the UN entrance to make sure that combatants don't get into the camp. But you know, you cannot also take the rebel side. Uh, you know, you cannot take their words, uh, gospel truth, because they are also on a uh, propaganda mission out there. Thank you, John, uh, for an insight into the situation in South Sudan. John Tanza there, he's the uh, VOA's managing editor for South Sudan.